There was a time when resources seemed endless. But in 2030, the great energy crisis began. With hardly any resources left on our world, global powers created the World Space Agency to look beyond the Earth for answers. The answer was found in Helium-3, a powerful isotope discovered in abundance on the Moon. With it, humanity could satisfy its energy demand for decades to come. And so, in 2032, Mankind colonized the moon. Spearheaded by the Lunar Council, the WSA constructed several permanent settlements to harvest and process helium-3. The resulting energy was transferred to Earth through a revolutionary energy network, the Microwave Power Transmission, or MPT. For a time, all seemed well. Then, one fateful night in 2054, the lights went out. No energy. The MPT had gone offline, and communication with the lunar colonist was lost. Without earthly resources to launch a full-scale rescue mission to the moon, the World Space Agency was shut down permanently in 2055. But a small group of former WSA colonists refused to accept humanity's bleak future. Determined to discover the colony's fate and to restore the MPT, they've been preparing their mission in an abandoned desert launch facility. Now, in 2059, they are ready to launch an astronaut to the moon. What awaits is unknown and unforeseeable, but the mission is clear. Deliver us the moon. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Deliver Us The Moon. This is a sci-fi thriller set in an apocalyptic near future where the Earth's natural resources are depleted. Yes, I read the blurb. Um, it seemed like my kind of thing after Tacoma and observation, so we are just going to jump in. Uh, it says, do you want to continue? I just had to make sure that it wasn't pitch black, because anyone who watches this channel knows that my uh, colour settings tend to be off of the missing lunar colonists gather all around the world tonight in remembrance of the 2054 MPT blackout that resulted in a global power outage and the loss of contact with the lunar colony. The blackout caused global turmoil which ultimately led to the closure of the World Space Agency one year later. In other news, the recent formation of the largest dust storm on record has prompted climatologists to readjust their forecast of the equatorial desert's growth rate. As a result of the new storm, the desert could soon cover 30% of the globe's landmass. Several governments have pledged support for refugees despite reports of resource shortages. The dust storm is expected to hit residential zones between the northern 49th and 50th latitude lines by late afternoon and pass over the World Space Agency's former MPC ground station in the Adirao Desert. Authorities have imposed a mandatory evacuation of the impacted areas. For countries north of the equatorial desert, temperatures are expected to be a mild 46 degrees Celsius. This was Nicole Cage for World News 1, September 16, 2059. Wishing you a safe and happy day. That does not seem like the weather's very nice. That's all I'm going to say. So here we are. I've had to turn down... Now, this game has ray tracing and all the fancy schmancy new computer stuff. I do have an RTX graphics card, but capturing it would probably destroy my computer and recording. So it's all set to kind of medium, so the graphics aren't as nice as they should be, but they're still really bloody nice. Uh, so let's just have a quick look around this room. Uh, I assume we are an astronaut, and we are going to the moon. Uh, moon man, far crossing. A brave astronaut adventures to the moon, his mission to explore the lunar expanse and uncover its mysteries. While the road is desolate and the hardships many, he knows that he must persevere to save mankind. Ooh. So I guess we're part of the WSA, we're the people who are trying to, uh, well, not give up on humanity. We do seem to uh, put ourselves in quite a predicament. The microwave power transmission, MPT, generates power inside a fusion reactor and sends it wirelessly to receivers on Earth fueled by helium-3 harvested on the moon. 
While the MPT took over a decade to complete, the energy signal travelled rapidly from the lunar colony to Earth. The World Space Agency believes the MPT can transmit enough energy for the colony's fusion reactor to supply approximately 20% of Earth's population. The percentage is expected to rise quickly. In another decade, the MPT could power all of Earth, says Dr. Isaac Johnson, the agency's lead scientist. Earth will never be dark again. Obviously not right, judging by the fact that Earth is right. Wow, a music controller and the uh, the looking analog stick is a little bit sensitive. It's kind of off or on. Fortuna, <laughs> are you there? Oh, Fortuna. Do we, we press the button? Oh, wait, what was the stuff on the table? Oh, this seems important. Launch sequence. I hope I don't have to remember this order because it ain't going to happen. Ah, I'll be fine. I'm sure it'll tell me. Ooh, that's a fancy suit. Ground control to Fortuna One. This is Claire. Please confirm radio Ooh. contact. Now I'm in third person. What? Uh, that was the wrong button. Astro tool. I mean, confirm radio contact. contact confirmed. Make your way to the launch platform and prime the rocket for liftoff. We have to launch before the dust storm hits. Okay. Enter the Feshenkov launch facility. Yeah, we don't actually have access to anything. Yeah, now we're third person. Well, isn't that bloody weird? There she is, the Taurus 5. It took us four years to get her ready for launch. But you need to hurry. The dust storm will hit this area in a few hours. If we don't succeed now, the Fortuna mission will be over for good. Okay. You can scan things. Created by Isaac Johnson, the MPT transmitted power from the moon to the Earth through a network of satellite dishes. Since Isaac's disappearance during 2054 blackout, Claire Johnson has studied her father's work closely in preparation for the Fortuna mission. Ah, so each, there's going to be a few things to scan, I guess, in the areas. Keep my eye open for them, I suppose. I'm not sure how, uh, that's, that's an interesting sprinting animation. I'm not sure if this is like a, a, not a horror game per se, but just, it says thriller, which worries me slightly. The Sputnik Monument. The monument marks the entrance to the Veshenkov Cosmodrome. The facility was abandoned until the Fortuna team made it their base of operations after the blackout and began preparations for humanity's last escape, last mission to space. The sign reads, To the Stars. Obviously in Russian. Well, let's see if we can get onto this elevator. That doesn't seem safe. Um, well, yeah, we're taking the long way up. I should have known that the elevator would break. Elevators always break in games like this. Ooh, wait, we can repair it. Oh no, is there puzzle elements to this game? It doesn't say puzzle. Hmm, we all know how good I am at puzzle games. Oh well, I'm in now. I just can't wait to get to space. Badass. Let's go. Man, the graphics on this game are ins like really the nice. The control center is located on the top floor. There you can prime the rocket for launch. Okay. Is this the top floor? Ah. So I have to press the button. years since we last received a microwave power transmission from the lunar colony. At first, no one believed it would be possible to transmit energy from the moon back to Earth. But the WSA proved the skeptics wrong. Just like you will, when you get the MPT back online. Well, there's Ray Trace and working its magic with the reflections. Right stick is flashlight. Ooh. Okay. 
Well, this is actually pitch black, so that's fun. Do I know what the code is? No! Okay, uh... Oh, 3548. If the power's out, use code 3548 for the door. 3548. And that is how corporate security goes every time. 3... 548? Five, I've forgotten it. Nope. God damn it. God damn it. 3548. 3548. There we go. If only I could forget a four digit number. This is uh, spooky as all hell. Can I open the windows? Ah, sweet. It's still pitch black. That didn't help that much, did it? The storm is definitely coming. <laughs> this building once functioned as part of the WSA, but it's been our home for many years now. I still can't believe you'll be leaving here for good soon. The desertification of this whole region won't take long after the storm passes through. We're good. Does that mean I'm not coming back? Is this a one-way space mission? I guess for the saving of humanity, it kind of makes sense. Humanity has doomed itself. Just wait till this becomes reality and we, uh, we find out there is something on the moon. Oh boy. Be a husk before you know it. What is this? Determined to seek the truth about the 2054 blackout and restore the MPT connection, Maria Gonzalez has raised the Fortuna team from the ashes of the WSA. Since 2055, Maria's team have been secretly working on their mission. Right trigger to zoom. Ooh. Wait, what am I interacting with? Ah, this. It's a... Memorial... Thing. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but okay. Uh, anything in here? What is that? Looks like part of our suit. Maria's broken ASE suit. One of the few survivors of the 2048... Eugen's cryosleep malfunction. Maria brought her damaged ASE unit back to Earth with her. She's been trying to repair her ASE in hopes of restoring holographic recordings captured by the device during her time at the Eugen's research facility. There's an ASE. Dear Sarah, we met years ago on the Pearson Space Station. I was relieved from service after Hugin's cryosleep malfunction. Remember how we talked about my broken ASE? I'm looking for a way to extract its holographic data, and I'm hoping you could help me out. Maria Gonzalez. Hi, Maria. Yeah, I remember. Holographic data runs through a unique hardware component. I specialize more in software, so you should reach out to my colleague, Rolf Robertson, here at Pearson. He's an excellent mechanic. I wonder why she needs those. Oh, antidepressants. Why are these games all filled, filled with antidepressants? Very upsetting. Immorandum. For those lost during the Hugens malfunction. Don't forget everyone we've lost that day. Oh dear. Seems horrendous, doesn't it? I'm guessing they were all frozen and something went horribly wrong and some of them didn't make it. Blueprint for a thrust? I thought it was a wormhole. Uh, I don't see anything in here. In fact, this looks like a place which is going to get... Ah, okay, it's teaching me how to move things. Here's a question. Can I use this to actually get somewhere? I don't think so. Seems like the kind of game where you'd have secrets hidden all over the place. That flashlight again. Because I can't see a damnable thing. I get a feeling a lot of this game is going to be me just fumbling with a flashlight. Oh, the control center. That seems like a good place to be. 
This isn't a control centre, it's a canteen. I suppose it's close. What's this? Fortuna one is go. Thank you, everyone. What's that on the wall? Here, Pong. <laughs> Wonderful. What the hell? What does that mean? Claire's office. Oh, it's the conference room plus Claire's office. We've isolated three plausible causes for the MPT blackout. One, the transmitter at Pearson Space Station. Claire, there you are. Come on, we're celebrating in the other room. Everyone is looking for you. I need to go over this one last time, Maria. We've been over it before, multiple times. We're good. Come, it's time to join the party. It won't take long, I'll be right there. A true Johansson. Once he set his mind to something, I could never convince him either. You are just as stubborn as your father. <laughs> Probably the only thing we have in common. I, I just don't understand why he didn't restore the MPT connection. He invented the damn thing. And now it's just us. No one else is even trying. If we fail... Remember what I told you. If it can be done, then we're going to do it. That's all we have to focus on. Go over your notes. Join us when you're ready. All right. Causes of the blackout. Right. Secondly, it could be one of the networks. I mean, she has a point. If the man who invented it didn't start it up again, it makes me think he turned it off for a reason. What is this? Claire's Rocket Model. Recruited straight out of university, Claire jo Johansson designed the Taurus V rocket for the Fortuna mission. Claire was eager to join the team to uncover the fates of her father and sister on the moon after the 2054 blackout. Is it just me going or is there a whole team of people going? Because right now it feels like just me. I mean, there's a lady in my head talking to me. But, uh... Ooh. No? Oh, <laughs> that's just a side door back into the canteen. Did it automatically turn my light off? Oh, interesting. Control centers this way. Oh, this looks like a control center. You're in the control center. Get the rocket ready to launch as fast as possible. Hmm. I feel like there'd be more people involved here. Uh, reboot. Okay. Re reboot. Reboot the power. Calculating new storm ETA. Claire, we have a problem. The storm is approaching faster than expected. Way faster. Time's running out. Keep going, Fortuna. We've been working too long to give up now. Can we not just wait for the storm to pass over? No. Oh. Uh, close both fuel valves. Oh. Okay, well how do I do that? Is that this down here? It's flashing red. I'm gonna go with no. Okay, so how do I close the fuel valves? Unless I have to do it with the computer. Or I leave. Leaving works too. Ah, these look fuel valvey. That's a technical term. Okay, that's one. Oh, my legs! That's right. I feel I know we're on Earth, but these uh, these the gravity here doesn't really feel like Earth. Oh. We're gonna have to move something to try and. I mean, there's a stairy thing. Can I use this? This seems like it could be useful. No? Okay, what's on here? Oh, wait a minute. This is the elevator in the room where I was like, oh, it seems interesting down there. So, can we bring that stairs up here? That seems like the most logical thing to do. 
Yes, there it is. Huzzah. Yeah. Perfect. Take this upstairs. Oh no, I need to do like a full 180 here. There we go. It's a good thing we didn't make this place out of, you know, durable materials. Then again, it has been many years since the uh, collapse. Supposedly, and if no one's been here to do anything, it doesn't fill me with confidence for the um, rigidity of said rocket that I'm going to be flying to the moon in. Okay, the hydrogen valves are closed. Head back inside the control center to prime the rocket for launch. Roger that. Is is that the big button? It, it, can I press the big button now? Yeah. I was gonna say, it appears to be leaving without us. Uh oh, something just got blow over. The rocket is primed. You have to launch now before the dust storm destroys the rocket and everything we've worked for. Oh dear. We have a minute. Surely it takes longer than a minute to launch a rocket. I can't say I've watched that many launches, but, just, you know, top on my head. Oh no, I'm running into the wind. I see why I'm slowing down. Great. Yeah, soundtrack is uh, awesome. Cage. Well, we're in the rocket. That's a good start, what right? Are you waiting for? We have to launch before it's too late. Rocket navigation systems. Please don't ask me to do the pre-flight. <laughs> oh no! One. Uh, that's this one. Eh. Ground launch sequencer started. Two is the big squishy thing. This. Orbital axis arm retracting. Be a little more careful. Oh. Perfect. Just like we practiced. Uh, three. Oh no. A one. A three, B three, B four. I don't know what any of these buttons are doing. <laughs> uh, okay, ready to re retract the gaseous oxygen vent arm. This sounds important, doesn't it? Build the sound suppression system tanks. Quickly re relieve all valves. Where's that? Oh, twist. Ah! This is surprisingly difficult with a controller! There we go. Sound suppression system engaged. Initiate hydrogen burn off. Uh, okay, I'm just going to assume it's both of these buttons. Oh dear. Can I just quickly just go to a mouse here? Yes, I can. There we go. Look how easy this is now. Oh. Seven's the big, the big swish. This. Rocket boosters, ignition start. Engines ready in five, four, three, two, start. One. We have oh God! Do we have to do anything else? I think we might. Oh dear! We'll worry about that when we get there. Is this where we see a dust storm just destroy the station underneath us? Because that would be pretty terrifying. Oh my God! There goes the bloody camera. 
We got any windows? Well, we kind of got a window. Don't worry, this is made in Russia. I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh, I think that's the atmosphere. Space! Separation. Yeah, there we go. We've separated from the booster engine. Now we're just the rocket. I mean, we appear to be spinning wildly out of control. Am I supposed to be in control of anything here? Because I, I don't feel like I am in control of anything. Oh, it's the Earth. Back online, it could restore the hope humanity lost after the lunar colony fell. We could recover, rebuild, and most of all, start thinking about a future. You'll need to find the MPT transmitter at the Pearson Space Station. From there, the power signal was relayed to Earth. This was the final link in the MPT network before the blackout. If there are answers to find, they're at Pearson, clear? We need to head down to the shelter. These winds are getting bad. Understood. For Tuna One, this storm is going to jam radio contact. You'll be on your own for a while. To reach the station, you must. Once you're in the I feel like all of that information is very important. Okay, what's my objective? Complete second stage of launch sequence. Stage separation is this button right here. And second stage ignition. Here we go. Well, this seems like a perfect place to end the first episode. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, let me know what you think. Your comments are greatly appreciated. Any opinions or input is also greatly appreciated. As always, I'll see you next time.